Here we go. Episode 43 of the Hardline Sports Talk. I am Michael Merlo. Alongside me on Zoom, I have John Michael Masiri. JM, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Very good. It was a um, crazy, crazy weekend in the NFL. The NFL was drunk on Sunday. Yeah. You ain't kidding. I mean, upsets on upsets on upsets. Um, just crazy things happening. Guys stepping in. Jordan Love stepped in for Aaron Rodgers. It was interesting. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of people calling Aaron Rodgers out. I mean, the amount of Aaron Rodgers hate. If you disliked Aaron Rodgers over the weekend, you had a field day. Yeah. And then you had Howard Stern Monday morning. He said, I would throw him out of the league. So, you know, you got oh some overreactions. You got yeah. some. It's There's a reason crazy. why Howard Stern isn't on ESPN. Yeah, well, he does make a lot of money on sports. Oh, yeah, but, but, you know, not yeah. for his sports stakes. No, definitely not for his sports stakes. Um, you got MLB free agency kicking off, I think, today. Yeah. So, you know, the GM meetings will start. Sandy Alderson will represent the Mets, along with his son, Brian Alderson, because, oh. you know, they haven't hired anybody yet. So Yeah, very nice, yeah. Good. And uh, the Yankees went to go see Justin Verlander along with the Mets today as he worked out. So you got a lot going on there. But we are going to start off in the NFL because that's where the craziness happened. And I want to start in Dallas because, hey, this is great to hear. But um, it's also surprising. They got absolutely, I used the word before, spanked by the Broncos. They were down 30 to nothing at one point in this game. They lost 30 to 16 in Jerry World. And, you know, I was one of those guys that really believe in this team. I had them four on our power rankings and I, you know, I'm not going to stick by the four. I still stick by this team that they're very talented. I think the roster is great offensively. I think they probably are the top three, you know, with the offense and the weapons they have and their quarterback, obviously, but this is a bad loss. I don't think they're a fluke. I don't think they're overrated, but it's not good. Yeah, it's not good. Um, you know, I think we shouldn't just get all hung up in one loss. I think, you know, the, the, they hadn't had a bad game really this year to this point. I mean, the Patriot game was a little shady, but I think the Patriots are proving that they're a good team anyways. Uh, they've had some impressive wins. So, yeah, every team has a bad game. I mean, we, we talk about the Buffalo Bills as being a Super Bowl contender, and they just lost to the Jaguars, an even worse loss. Um, so, yeah, bad game. You know, teams have bad games every once in a while. Uh, I, I still think this team's a serious, legit contender in the NFC. And I, I think still they're very obviously just going to run away with the NFC East. Yeah, I mean, they're one of those teams that they don't have to worry about the division at all. And, yeah, I just, you know, I understand people hate them. I understand they're the most hated team in the country. But I don't I don't understand how a, a fan of the NFL, you know, somebody that considers themselves maybe not even a ca- more than a casual fan, can look at this team and say, "Yeah, they're overrated. Yeah, they're not that good." I, I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Like, with, with take your bias glasses off. They've got a top three offensive line. Their wide receivers are fantastic. They've got two running backs that can, you know, would be st- obvious, you know, big time starters on any other team. They got two of them. They have an elite quarterback, and their defense has improved, and they're going to get their best defensive lineman back probably at the end of this month. Yep. I don't understand how you look at this team and say, overrated, not good, will phase out. I don't think this team you phases know why? out at all. I think they're only going to get better. I think the Cowboys, I think what the, why they say that is their fans have been overrating them for so long. You know, you always hear the cliche of Cowboys fans, oh, this is our year, this is our year. And, you know, they've had some disappointing teams in the past couple of years um, where they, they they haven't really performed the way they should on paper. And I think they're finally doing it this year. And people just want to be pessimistic and say that it's a fluke and whatnot. But but it's not a fluke because, like you just said, there. I mean, they're, they really don't have a lot of weaknesses across that, that roster. And we know how great the offense is, a top three offense in the NFL. And the defense has improved since last year for reasons that we discussed. I think Dan Quinn is a massive reason to do with that. But, um, yeah, the Cowboys are for real. Let's, and, and let's start talking about them being for real because they, uh, they certainly are going to make a lot of noise in the NFC this year. Trayvon Diggs, who has gotten a lot of criticism. I've actually defended him multiple times. Had a tough game against Tim Patrick on Sunday for sure. But um, he'll be fine, and they'll be fine. You know, my power rankings that we posted on our Instagram page, 
they were tough. I mean, yeah. you look at this week. I mean, you had all – I think both of us, six out of the ten teams lost. Yeah. And my top four lost. The Packers, the Bills, the Rams, and the Cowboys all lost. Jeez, yeah. I mean, all so you know, have, but that lets you know how many good teams the NFL lost this weekend. Yeah. It was just a I'm weird a big week. shake up. Just a really weird week in the NFL. It was a very weird week. And let's um, shift over quick to the Packers and the Chiefs because, and, and I said this before, I don't think the storyline should be Jordan Love played bad. I, I think I think he was fine, you know, not fine, but he didn't, he didn't lose them the game. He didn't win right. them the game. He just played. He played all right. He didn't look great, but he didn't. Well, he wasn't the reason. I think the storyline here is the fact that the Chiefs had a prime opportunity to blow a team out. Yep, and they're really showing that this is for real. This is an issue. They are not that good. Yeah. And they, they win the game 13 to seven and listen, the Packers defense has been great all season, but they had it dealt with a ton of injuries. Kenny Clark, who's been one of their best defenders all year goes down early in the game. Doesn't come back in. Obviously Jerry Alexander is out. They still only score 13 points. I don't understand what is wrong with this team. Yeah, neither do I. And it, it's very, you know, it, it's odd that Pat Mahomes had 37 pass attempts and had 166 yards. Um, one touchdown, he had a 74.8 pass rating. I mean, the numbers he's been putting up this year are, are average at best, honestly, at this point. Um, we know the interceptions have been a problem. He didn't throw one yesterday. But anytime you throw the ball 37 times and your your yardage is 166 yards, that, that, that – that's a problem. I mean, his longest pass of the day was 25 yards, and we're not used to seeing that from Pat Mahomes. We're used to seeing the bombs down the field and everything like that. And, um, you know, I don't – to be honest with you, I can't exactly tell you what's wrong with the Chiefs. I mean, I, I, I'm i not a Chiefs fan. I, I'm not an expert on the team. I haven't watched enough of them to give you an exact answer. But, I mean, you look at, for example, like a Tyreek Hill. He's got 11 targets yesterday, catches four passes, 37 yards. That's not what we're used to seeing out of Tyreek Hill. Right. We're used to seeing, you know, upwards of 100 yards every game out of Tyreek Hill and, you know, a, a deep shot that they connect on. And, and there hasn't been a lot of that this year. And it's – I don't know who to put the blame on. Do I put it on Tyreek Hill? Do I put it on Pat Mahomes? I put it on the line. Do I put it on Andy Reid? You don't – I don't know who to put it on, but – I think, like you briefly mentioned, week after week, the Kansas City Chiefs are proving that they're just not that good. And I thought last week, I honestly thought they were going to have that game where they turned it on. I, th- yeah. I thought it could come against the Giants on Monday night, and it didn't uh, get right game. I It looked on like early. I thought the Chiefs were going to get it right against the Packers and blow them out. They didn't. After watching the Giants game, though, and watching the Pack, uh, excuse me, the Giants and the Chiefs game, I – and understanding the defensive scheme the Giants ran, I understand how teams are doing it. They're putting two high safeties, they're playing very soft, and they're saying, you're not going to beat me deep. You're going to beat me short. And you, you're going to have to take the check downs. You're going to have to take the short passes. You're going to have to consistently run the ball on us if you're going to beat us because teams know they're impatient. Teams know Mahomes doesn't want to do that. The offense does not want to do that. And that's, what ha- that's what's happening. They're forcing Mahomes to go downfield when there's guys there, and he's turning the ball over. Mahomes has got to go back to the basics here. He's got to make them play him short and then take the deep shots when they're there instead of just looking for the deep shot every time. He- they're impatient and yeah, they're stubborn, and they got to figure it out. I think that's what you get from Pat Mahomes because he he's always played that backyard football style, and now he can't play backyard football. When you're just sit- having your safety sit deep, and, you know, beat me on the check downs, beat me on this and that. I don't know if that's exactly the, the style. I know, actually, that's not the style he wants to play. And who knows? Maybe maybe they found a weakness in him that he's not – he actually is better when he's creating and escaping and whatever. And he, he's just not that much better than anybody else in terms of, you know, taking what the defense gives you and and short passing. 
It's crazy that if I told you the, the NFL and defenses would figure out one player and yeah. you told me it wasn't Lamar Jackson, it would be Patrick Mahomes. I would have called yeah. you crazy a few years ago, but, but that's the way it looks right now. It, it's really bad. And I heard um, Carl Banks actually said this this morning on the radio. He said that Andy Reid, his whole career, he's, he's stubborn and he doesn't like to make a lot of in-game adjustments. He doesn't like to make adjustments at all. Apparently, this is what he was saying, and I was like, "That sounds awkward. That sounds weird." But Andy Reid just wants to win the way he the way win the way they're going to win, and that's going to be taking that deep shot. That's going to be hitting the home runs, and I don't know. They, something has to change for this team because, I mean, they're in a playoff spot. They did get a win. I mean, we should talk. I thought the defense played pretty good. I thought they got a good pass rush against a, you know a pretty good offensive line for the Packers. I thought they were in Love's face the whole time. They blitzed a lot. But I, I don't know. It's it's so weird. It's so awkward. I mean, you it's take away a, a missed Mason Crosby field goal, and then the other one that got blocked. You're talking that's a tie game, and and right. and who knows how the rest of the game plays out. So, yeah, obviously, you know they won, but you know winning by six points, and I don't even think the margin of victory is a thing to be concerned about. I think the 13 points is the thing to, to be worried about. You know, you put up 13 points against. Uh, essentially a rookie quarterback in Jordan Love. We know he's not, but, you know, his first NFL start um, at home with all your starters, all your big-name guys ready to go, and you put up 13 points and get 166 yards on 37 pass times. And listen, I know the Packers have a good defense this year, but you're supposed to be a really good offense. So that ain't happening. You're supposed to be the best offense in the league. Yeah. And listen, this division's wide open still. I mean, the, the Chargers yeah. the Chargers have hit a couple bumps in the road, so this thing is not completely settled in the AFC West, not quite yet at all. And like you said, they do have a playoff spot, but at this point, I still do not expect them expect them to win the division. I don't either. And we'll talk about the AFC later because it's weird, but I think I think the Chargers are gonna win this division easily, actually. But um, let's keep going to the NFC because the Rams did lose a – I don't know if I would say stunner. I think the way they looked, yeah, I would say stunned me. Although I did think that the Titans would cover the spread, I, and I, I picked them. I'm surprised with the way they looked. The, the, the Titans did beat the Rams pretty single-handedly, 28-16 uh, to 16 on Sunday Night Football. It was pretty much done early. It was 21-3 to three at one point. And the defense for the Titans really stepped up and they've been stepping up lately. And without Derrick Henry now, the Titans improved to seven and two. They are on a five game winning streak. And I'm, I'm trying to ask myself this question. Are they the best team in the AFC right now, even with Derrick Henry? And I don't know the answer to that. Yeah. You know, that that's the surprising thing about the Titans that, you know, we we've seen their defense has been getting worse over the past couple of years. And we thought that was really going to hinder them this year. You know, they lost uh, Adore Jackson to the Giants at free agency. Um, and, you know, they, they really focused, focused more on the offensive side of the ball this offseason. We know the Julio Jones trade, but their defense has been stepping up big time. And now they're 7-2. And, and if you take away that loss against the Jets, which, you know, you know, you can't, but it was a fluky game. But if you take away that loss, you're talking 7-1, and one, so – they're they're definitely Eight a force one. to be they're or right. I was just basically saying take the game away, but they're oh. they're a force to be reckoned with, and they've had some really impressive wins now. I mean, they've beaten the Rams and the Bills, two teams who could possibly you know match up in the Super Bowl this year if the Titans don't you know end up taking the Bills down. But no Derrick Henry to be able to do that. You know, I think I think we don't give Mike Vrabel enough credit sometimes because. We like to talk about, uh, you know, the top coaches in the NFL and some guys immediately come to mind. And obviously Mike Vrabel hasn't been around for that long, but he's always kept them in it ever since he's been hired. And he obviously took them the AFC championship game a couple of years ago um, and he's made them very relevant. Yeah, Vrabel's been a great coach for them 100%. And they lost their offensive coordinator, Arthur Smith. He became the head coach with the Falcons. And they haven't really... Um... Missed a beat this season. Right. And the, the first game, they looked pretty bad against the Cardinals. But other than that, they've been excellent offensively. And I, I think that's credit to to Mike Vrabel 100%. You know, he's not an offensive coach. But 
to keep everybody intact, to make sure he picked the right coach to be the next offensive corner. He's done a good job, 100%, and they don't get enough credit at all. I've wrote them off. I haven't picked them a lot. Yeah. And and the Rams here, I you know, I'm not worried about them. They, You know, I said this all week about Stafford and how I can't put him up there with the, you know, the top, top QBs because – he kind of has these games where he's inconsistent. Maybe some things aren't going right. And he has a, he has a dud. He had yeah. that against the Cardinals. He has it now. If they lose. They're seven and two. They'll be fine. I still think they're one of the three best teams in the NFL. But obviously, especially for my fantasy team, you don't like to see this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like anytime we get a, a game like this, it's usually more the storyline where, you know, you applaud the the team that won instead of the team that lost because there was two very good teams facing off. And, you know, you lose that game. It's not a big deal for the loser, but you win that game in the Titans case. That, that's a big statement for them to make. So uh, definitely that definitely did happen. That was a very big statement for them to make, especially after uh, Derrick Henry getting injured. The one thing I will say about the Tennessee Titans that would is definitely surprising me. Um, if you would have told me that they would be seven and two and Julio Jones would be pretty irrelevant in the team's offense, I would be very, very surprised. And that that's what's going on right now. I mean, I got to admit it. I was pretty wrong about Julio going into this year. Uh, yeah. I, I remember we made our, our, our receiver list and I definitely had him in the top 10. I think he still deserved to be there, even though, you know, he had to put a couple injuries and maybe a little bit of a drop in production when he was on the field in Atlanta, but he has been pretty irrelevant, like I said, for this offense. The Bears just took the lead. Wow. Yeah. Well, they're, they're an extra point away from taking the lead. Uh, yeah, and you know you know what's funny, too? I was – I kind of almost nailed Julio. I actually was kind of wrong because I had him 10 on my list, and I did that out of respect. I didn't think he'd have a good year. But A.J. Brown, who I had very high on my wide receiver list, and – I'm very high on in general. He's been banged up. He hasn't been great. So I I think you nailed that right on the head. The, the, the two biggest weapons for this team on the receiving side haven't been fantastic. I mean, Brown, again, he's dealt with injuries, he's been inconsistent. He's had a couple of big games, but other than that, hasn't been the A.J. Brown that we you know came to know last year when he was on the field. So yeah. it, I think Tannehill deserves a lot of credit. And I think T- Tannehill's a very underrated athlete. He can run a little bit. Yeah. And without Henry, and I still think they're actually going to bring Henry back. I think he'll come back at some point this year. They're going to use his legs a lot. Watch out. Yeah, they signed Adrian Peterson. Uh, McNichols is better out of the backfield. They'll probably need to bring in another running back to get them through this phase. But I think they will be fine. Uh, I think they're going to, especially after last night, I think they're going to win this division. Although the, the Colts did look good against the Jets. It wouldn't shock me if the Colts made a run, but they've already lost two games to them. They're three games back. I think this is the Titans division here. And, and the Rams, the Rams will be fine. Although they do play in a division with the Arizona Cardinals and the Cardinals mm-hmm. are eight and one. And they, they're going to have to probably get a wild card spot. The, the Rams, unless the Cardinals lose a couple of games and the Rams could beat them head to head later in the year. But let's shift right into the Cardinals who, put a beat down on the San Francisco 49ers yesterday in San Francisco without Kyler Murray, without DeAndre Hopkins, without AJ Green, and without Chase Edmonds, who ended up going down early in that game. Very impressive win, Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy is, Colt McCoy, Colt McCoy is really uh, setting himself up here for, like, backup QB, you know, big win, you yeah. know, one week, one week of the year. You need a big win, Colt McCoy's got you. Yeah. Like, an unexpected, yeah. like, on the road. He did it for the Giants. He is my boy. Did it for the Giants last year in, in in Seattle. He does it here for the for the Cardinals, and I deserve all the heat in the world because I haven't believed in this team, and I am now a believer. Yeah, I don't know why it takes a backup quarterback victory for a team for me to become a big time believer, but the yeah. roster. I think it tells you a lot about the roster too and the coaching. Yeah, and I know they were great. And they're definitely moving up my power rankings. They are impressive right now. Yeah, they're they're definitely a force to be reckoned with in the NFC. I mean, they'd be the one seed right now. Um, you know, I I think the story here, one of the stories is the Niners just aren't all that good, honestly. Like we 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 hyped them up in the offseason. I remember I I think I had them 
I had them going to the divisional round in the postseason. And, and in the NFC championship. Yeah, you had them in the NFC championship game. And, I mean, I'm watching this team, uh, and I've seen a lot of them this year. One of my roommates is, is a big Niners fan. And I've been watching them, and it just – the offense has just been so dormant and and I think they're they missed George Kittle. He came back, but even with him, they just seem to not have a real smooth plan on offense. It seems to be very hesitant and robotic in in a way. You know, it, it's not exactly a, a well-oiled machine going up and down the field. Um, and the defense hasn't been to the level we've seen the past couple of years. And now they've been dealing with injury problems. They just got announced that their right tackle, Mike McClinchy's out for the year. So the Niners are in trouble. And I, I don't, I, I personally don't see this team making a, a, a wild card spot. No, I don't think, I think you're right. I don't see them making a, a run at the the postseason. And I think it may be time. And G, listen, Jimmy G, if you look at the stat line, other than the pick late in that game, like you, the stat line is deceiving because the stat line looks pretty good. Yeah. But I think it's time that we start getting a look at Trey Lance like for good. Like no yeah. more, you know, oh, Jimmy G might come back from injury. No more Jimmy G is a starting quarterback when he right. comes back. No. Let's give Trey Lance the keys to the franchise because at this point, that's He's, what you want to see. That's what fans want to see. Jimmy G is not what he used to be. I mean, he, didn't, he never used to be anything crazy, but – you can see him in the pocket and trying to move around and escape. And that needs really seems like it, it, it's never going to be to the point where it was before the injury. He's um, had I'm numerous mobility issues that I've seen. Do I feel like a lot of people are low on Trey Lance now too. Like he came in a couple of times. He didn't look like all that great. I, I think people are like selling their stock on him. I'd buy that up. I, you know, I'm yeah. how much I love. I my mean, boy listen, Trey Lance. we knew Trey Lance was going to be, you know, everybody called him a project. So just because a guy doesn't come in on into in the NFL and burst onto the scene and, you know, start breaking records, it doesn't mean he's not going to be good. Yeah. I'm, I'm all over my boy. Isn't it crazy though, how you can't lay your finger on if a guy's turns out to be a good quarterback or not years and years after i mean come on we're still we're still debating if Derek carr is a good is the raiders franchise quarterback the guy's been on the team for like seven years baker mayfield is still a question mark um daniel jones daniel jones mm, yeah no daniel jones yes the giants are still trying to figure out if that's going to be their guy joe burrow one week we say oh my god joe burrow is finally coming into his own he's such a stud next week oh never mind let's pump the brakes on the bang like you don't know. You need like years and years of sample size. So let's all stop being fair weather. And let's remember the way the NFL is. This isn't the MLB where you play 162 games. This is a 16 game sample size. So it's not the biggest sample size in the world. And you got to let these guys kind of come into their own and develop. So uh, I don't know. Let's not assess all these guys until years down the line. You're not going to know whether or not Zach Wilson's a guy for a couple of years. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's nice to have your Justin Herberts and your Pat Mahomes that just come out and light the league on fire right away. Like th- that's, that's fun, yeah. but that, that happens once in a blue moon. If we, wouldn't, you, wouldn't we love that, right? Wouldn't we yeah. love any sort of positive things happen to our teams? Yeah. Um, I, that's a perfect segue to the Bengals and Joe Burrow, actually. Thank you. Good job. I do want to talk about the AFC North because that's a mess. We have the Steelers right now. They're driving down the field. We're going to get to them in a minute. They're losing to the Bears by one with uh, less than a minute to go. So we're, we'll talk about them in a minute. But I do want to talk about the Browns and the Bengals yesterday. The, the Bengals, who come off a bad loss to the Jets, but as of going into that game against the Jets, they were the one seed. Lose that game, lose to the Browns. Two weeks later, they are the 10th seed in the AFC wow. and they're in last place in their division it, unless the Steelers lose and they're not but crazy how things can change that fast and crazy how we definitely and I don't know if I was one of them I'd have to go back and check but we overhyped this Bengals team 100% I think we all did we needed to pump the brakes and now we're gonna you know 
we're pumping the brakes. They are not that yeah. great. Joe Burrow, who is, I think, a franchise quarterback, does turn the ball over. There's no doubt about that. He's got yeah. 10 interceptions already. And, I, and I'm just shocked. I mean, I like the Bengals in this game, but I'm shocked at the score, 41-16 to 16 in Cincinnati. I know. I know. Um, yeah, and, and the Browns haven't been all that special lately. And, you know, we, we've obviously know the, the news about OBJ. That was kind of lingering over them, but – that clearly didn't bother them. And, yeah, you're right. Joe Burrow does turn the football over. I mean, this is the first time we've seen him go into the red zone and, and throw an irresponsible interception this year. I've seen him do it a couple of times. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a fun – you always look for that fun team to, you know, jump on and say, oh, this team's great. And the Bengals were that team. I mean, you had a young guy in Joe Burrow like uh, like we've been talking about and – and Jamar Chase, who bursted onto the scene uh, as a rookie, putting up crazy yeah. numbers. Um, and, and, you know, the Bengals haven't been good for a long time, and they've been kind of put in that category as the the misery franchises of the NFL. And, uh, you know, we want to see them be good, and they had a little swagger to them. But let's not forget, you know, swagger can only take you so much. Let's just look at the way this team is constructed and built and – uh I mean, I, I still think they're going to put up a respectable record this year. I think we could still definitely see them in the playoffs. Sure. But uh, the fact that, you know, they were the one seed in the AFC, obviously that that's, you know, just through week seven and whatnot. That's not how it's going to shake up through the NFL season. So, um, I don't know. The Honestly, the NFL is weird this year with – I feel like it's very top-heavy this year compared to the, to the past years. I mean, you have – uh, like 10, I wouldn't even say 10 teams, eight teams who are like, that's that team can definitely be in the Super Bowl. They are really good. But and then five those, of them are in the NFC. And then those last, yeah, and then those last couple seeds in, in each conference, you're like, well, who's going to even fill out these spots? I mean, let's just go over really quick. You got Cowboys, Packers, Bucks, Cardinals, Rams. Those are five teams in the NFC. You're like, those are Super Bowl contenders. Right. Very good teams. Then you go to the AFC. Titans, Ravens, Bills. Three teams. You could see them in the Super Bowl. Then you go, okay, who's going to fill in those last four spots in the NFC, in, in the AFC? You know, so who's going to win? Who's going to win the West? Then who's going to fill out the wild card? Is it going to be the Steelers? Is it going to be the Browns, the Bengals? The Colts, the Raiders, the Chiefs, the Chargers, Patriots. the Patriots. So, and then you go over to the NFC. You're talking about the Vikings. You're talking about the Saints. You're talking about the Seahawks, whoever. Um, and those are a bunch of teams who are like, eh. I mean, the Seahawks, it's hard to assess because, you know, Wilson's been hurt. But even when he was around, the defense has been shady. So. It's weird. You know, and that, uh, I, I hate to bounce around. But just because I brought up the Seahawks, I feel like obviously you can't call the Russell Wilson era a failure, and it's it's certainly not over. Um, I mean, he's been there; he, he's not forty years old, but he's been there for a while. And obviously, they got the one Super Bowl against Denver. Then the next year, they lost to New England. But the way they kind of constructed that roster from twenty fifteen on, it, it seemed like it just kept getting worse and worse every single year. And I don't think it's any different this year. I mean, they've been trying to solve the offensive line for years. And, and now that great defense that they were known for when they were a Super Bowl team, that's long gone. And they've been trying to find it since. And that seems to be getting worse. Yeah, it's what happens when you got to start paying, guys. Exactly. It's, it, it gets harder. you got to win with your quarterback, at least on, on his rookie deal. Hope you get, you know, big, big uh, guys in the draft late in the rounds you're not paying a lot and and what they boom what happens if if uh kansas city goes down the same path their their roster just can't can't get it done can't get it done roster is not good enough you're giving pat Mahomes 500 million dollars which is loaded it's 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 uh back loaded it's not front loaded so that's going to keep getting bigger and bigger yeah, it's that's pretty crazy. I can't, I still can't believe the size of that contract. Like it's yeah. it's unbelievable. The bill, I'm sure the Bills know that. I'm sure the Bills know. Listen, this year we got to get it done. Do they though? Like, like yeah, of course they'd like to get it done this year. But what's stopping them from any other year? 
Like as of today, I think Josh Allen is right up there with any quarterback you put up in the in, in the NFL. I think right. he's that good. Right. But so like, yes, I think there's a sense of urgency this year because of how wide open the AFC is. And I, I still I probably lean toward the Bills as still being the better team. Them and the Ravens are the two best teams, in my opinion, in the AFC. But I still feel like they are, you know, one of the top two or three favorites to get to the Super Bowl. So I understand you saying, oh, there's a sense of urgency. They feel like they have to win it, maybe when the Chiefs aren't on track. But I don't know. I feel like the, any year the Bills can go and do it. I understand what you're saying. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, it's this year or never. But uh, kind of to the point I was saying, you're going to pay Josh Allen after this offseason. Um, or uh, did they, they gave pay him? The They paid him. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, they paid him already. But that contract's going to start kicking in after this oh. season, uh, just like Pat Mahomes. And – Time, the, the window is closing. You know what I mean? Like it's not, it's not, it's not going to be as flexible anymore. So yes, of course, quarterbacks can still be paid and win Super Bowls. I'm not saying that, but it certainly gets more difficult. And if there's a time to maximize your roster and your cap without allocating it to your quarterback as much, it's right now. So yeah, oh, I understand that. That makes yeah. a ton of sense. Yeah. But yeah, uh, and we just spoke about the Ravens. They. Another comeback win. They are crazy. Uh, this is their third win, I think, down double digits at, at half. Or in the in the second half, they, they find a way to win a game. Unbelievable. Uh, Lamar was great. Had a couple of bad interceptions, but and early on he struggled. But he ended up finishing that game very, very well. He rushed for 121 yards. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable when you look at when you look up at the end of the game and you see his stat line. It, it, it's crazy how good he yeah. is. I mean, we asked for the closest thing to Vic, and we got it. Yeah, I mean, this is the closest thing we've ever seen to Michael Beck. You're exactly right. And I think the Ravens deserve credit. And I think Lamar Jackson deserves a ton of credit for the way they've kind of adjusted their their philosophy in winning this year. I mean, we know the injuries to the running back room that happened. You have Gus Edwards and J.K. Dobbins go down and they kind of John Harbaugh and and the Ravens kind of put a little more pressure on Lamar Jackson uh, to, to air it out a little more this year. I mean, he's on pace to break. The, his his personal passing yard record by like a thousand yards right now. He he's he's really airing it out so far this year, and they've been winning, and he's been playing very well. So I think that just goes to show that Lamar Jackson. Everybody likes a Jogo. He's a running back. He's he's more than just a, a guy who can you know escape and scramble. So he he's one hell of a quarterback, and he's he's someone I'd want on my team for the next ten years. Uh, he's my MVP right now. Yeah. And his odds are crazy. You mean like crazy plus high or crazy low? They're plus twelve hundred. That's too oh, wow. high. I'd go. Uh, Who's the favorite, Brady? I don't know. Let's check. I think it was Allen. I mean, listen. The interceptions are a little high. He's got seven through eight games, but I get too caught up in that. Honestly, I, I don't want to exaggerate here but i think interceptions is like a tad bit overrated and i know i was just talking about how pat mahomes you know hasn't been playing well but and i mentioned his interceptions but he's also got other statistics to back that up um but we've seen guys in the nfl put up great numbers peyton manning was no guy who would he'd be he'd be throwing at least 12 15 interceptions a year he was no guy who was, was keeping it like aaron Rodgers throwing two picks in a season um so I don't know. You, I've said that. You've seen it with Daniel Jones. You know, we've gotten in arguments about Daniel Jones. You've been, oh, well, this this pass got tipped. This guy dropped that. This was a blown route. You know, you, you I've said kinda, that, yeah. You can kind of tell. You could, like, if the guy is making really bad decisions, then yes, okay. You're right. Interceptions are more of. You got to watch the tape. You got to see what happened on the play. And right. again, if it's a bad read, if he doesn't see a guy and he just makes a terrible throw, okay, it's on him. Turnovers are bad. But yeah, I agree. They, they're overrated. They, they, they are. They have been. So I mean, you know what? You know what's so, a perfect example of that? Andrew Luck in 2014 threw for 40 touchdowns and 16 interceptions. You really think the Colts cared that he threw 16 interceptions? I mean, he had a 90. 90- no. He had a 96 passer rating. He threw for 4,700 yards, 40 touchdowns. Like, 
I'm not saying everybody go be Jameis Winston and throw 30 picks, but let's uh, I don't know. Interceptions to me are kind of like I'm trying to like compare it to baseball. They're kind of like batting average to me. Like I think batting average is important, and I look at it to see if a hitter, you know, how great a hitter is, but. It's I, I would like to look at other stats first to make some judgment compared to, to batting average. I don't know. I'm just you trying to make real, an analogy here. You know what I realized I need the other day? What? Like a watch, like a legit watch. Why? I don't know. It like makes everything look better. Like if I had a nice gold wrist wrist watch right here. Oh right, yeah, go. Uh, yeah, check it. That was kind of random. Why did you say It was that? completely off. Because like I went like this, and I looked at my wrist. It's just naked. Well, yeah. I uh, you know. Yeah. You got the Apple Watch. You got an Apple Watch. Yeah. I lost mine, and you know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just lost it. That's. Just I shame. lost it. And, yeah, yeah. You know it. It is what it is. But, um, yeah, that's a shame. Um, it doesn't look as fancy. The Apple Watch does not look as fancy. Right. I mean, I kind of want to get a new band for this, though. I got, like, the, Vel- the Velcro thing. I kind of want to go a little fancy. Yeah, definitely got a new one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, you, you, you messed me up because you started talking about watches. I know. The, the Steelers okay. won. I was done. The Steelers did win in, in, in the grossest game in Monday Night Football history, the grossest matchup. Can we stop giving all these freaking teams these stupid primetime games? They have to. I mean, come on. I, the Steelers have been on Sunday night and Monday night football, I feel like, like three times this year already. I don't mind the Steelers. I have a problem with the Bears. They're putrid. The Bears are putrid, but the Steelers aren't. They, they just won by a freaking field goal at home against the Bears. Yeah. So, and they're five and three. They're second place they in the are. division. The Steelers, they do it every year, I feel like. They're they like, got a good they're defense. Not that, they're not that good. And, oh, never mind. They got a fantastic coach, a great defense, and weapons on the outside, and a good running back. You know, I know it's kind of old, but I loved when the Mike Vrabel response to when they asked him if he was interested in any college football coach. Mike jobs. Tomlin. What I say? Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel. Sorry, he's Mike Tomlin. Um, well, he's right. Why the hell would Mike Tomlin decide? Oh yeah, let me leave the Pittsburgh Steelers where I've been coaching for freaking like twenty years at this point. I mean, he's been I, there. For- He's been there forever. Um, I love this response. If you didn't see it, go look yeah. it up. Oh, yeah. Let he, me like, where they ask him Cincinnati. Where did they ask him to go? USC. USC. Yeah. Uh, let him go to let him go to USC. He goes, I have one of the five greatest jobs in the NFL. One of the great five greatest jobs in the world or something or in, in all football. And he goes, you're not asking Andy Reid or, you know, yeah. any, any other big coach that question. Why are you right. asking me? And he goes, he said this and he's wrong. There's not a big enough blank check that could make me leave this job. Okay, chill, right. chill. They yeah. come at you, offer you ten yeah. million dollars a year. Right, you are leaving your job and right. going to go right. to the USC Trojans. I mean, like, all right, come yeah, on. See ya. Yeah, I will go across country for ten million dollars a year. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. He it was a great answer. I mean, he really shot the rumor down. But he did. He did make a threat. He made a good threat too. He made he made a threat. He said, yeah. "USC, give me a blank check. Yeah. Make yeah, it a pretty big like, one." There's no blank check that would make me leave the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But if you like offer yeah. me a record contract, yeah. maybe, oh, yeah, I'll maybe, come. maybe like twelve million, or I, yeah. I would even take ten. But uh, this is all hypothetical. No. Yeah, he's he's good. Good to see my Giants get on the board with a W yesterday. It was, it was yeah, happy. yeah, very nice, very uplifting win for the, for the New York Giants. Apparently, uh, yeah, some of your fans are saying you guys literally should be six and three right now. Yeah. Um, you no, they're they're honestly right. You should be six and three. You know, maybe if you had you know Dak Prescott and if your running back was Derrick Henry and that that probably make you six and three. Maybe no, but back with Bill Belichick or your head coach to Bill Belichick. Then. They should definitely have one more win. What? Which they, one? The yeah. the the Washington one. Yeah, they should have that win. And 
You know, people say they should have won the Atlanta game, and yeah, they should have won it, but there was no play that they missed and was like, oh, if they make this play, they win. Like, they did lose the game. They did let Atlanta drive right down the freaking field and kick the field goal. So I can't say, like, oh, they had that game. So I think they should have four wins right now. I think that's such a stupid thing to say, though, because then you could be like, do you think a couple Saints fans are like, oh, we should be whatever, and, uh, you know, we should have won that Giant game. So No, but no, I mean, like, the yeah, I mean, fans are idiots, but, I mean, they literally should have won that. Washington game. I understand. They should but have won at that. At the end game. of the day, you are what your record says you are. So, yeah, let's let's relax. I mean, they did completely outplay the football team that day. But okay, All yeah, right. but they out they outplayed them, but they never executed. Kind of well, like what had... the Chiefs did yesterday against the Packers. They ended up winning the game, but like they, like we said, they should have blown them out. But they never they they were they never did it. Yeah. Did they had the drop the, pass. It's so many they opportunities. Had the, they had the, the holding call on the um, Daniel Jones touchdown run. They ended up not scoring on that drive. And dropped it. Yeah, call, exactly. Whatever. Yeah. So you're right. They didn't execute. All right. Still some things to get to. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Here we go. We are back. Episode 43 of the Hardline Sports Talk. Uh, let's get into some NBA here. We'll do MLB free agency later in the week, you know, when things actually start happening. Uh, not much going on. We're not going to uh, break down qualify. the breaking news of Andrew Heaney signing an eight and a half million dollar deal with the Dodgers. He, no, so that's not um, going to be, that's not on the topic. Okay. That's not on the topic sheet. Um, neither is Michael Conforto declining the uh, oh, yeah. qualifying offer. What happened with so. Syndergaard? I mean, the dude's just taking his time, but he's going to accept he sh- it. He should. He's got enough. Okay. I'm not really worried about that. Um, all right. NBA. Uh, the Knicks got rolled over by the freaking Cats, who actually aren't half bad. They're like seven and four yeah. or something. Uh, but Ricky Rubio went for 37 points, and they yeah. beat him on Sunday. Please. But the Knicks, Monday night, beat the 76ers without Joel Embiid and Tobias Harris. But a win's a win, and it's technically over the one seed, so put that in your back pocket. Well, how many times have we heard that over the past couple of years? The blah, blah, blah beat the 76ers without Joel Embiid. I mean, like, this guy gets hurt all the freaking time. But um, I was rest. Uh, yeah, I guess load management. I mean, that's the new thing. Pause. That's a big pause. Why Why do what? they got to – the phrase load management in the NBA. Load Load management. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. is a pause. Yeah. That's a pause. Yeah. What do you mean by that? No. Um. What do you mean? explain? Yeah. What you mean by yeah. that? What do you please, mean by that? Greg? Oh, Collins, you know that. What do you mean when you're doing load management? No, no, that reminds me. So today I had a flag football game, and um, I caught like a ball over the middle of the field and like ran over a kid. So mm-hmm. then, like, I helped him up or whatever. Sorry, video. He like, yeah, he like started talking. He was like. Oh, I, I take those. I take those. And then I was like, yeah, dude, like, honestly, I respect that. Like, that's a big load coming at you. And then, like, after I said it, I was like, hmm. Well, I mean, what he said, too, could have been pause. I take yeah. those. Go yeah, I please. take that. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, hmm, pause. I probably should have yeah, said please. that. But yeah, no, uh, no, perfect. Good load management for Joel and B. Whatever, whatever works. 76ers. Um, yeah, Nick's Nick's been playing up and down. I mean, Ricky Rubio all of a sudden is is Steph Curry. I mean, 37 yeah, points. He was, eight, he was eight of eight from three point range. Good. Um, but yeah, I mean, Knicks are inconsistent. I think that kind of goes along with the players, the way the players have been playing, obviously. I mean, what else would it be? But you got Julius Randle playing pretty inconsistently, and now RJ's starting to cool off a little bit. He's had, I think he was six for 20 on uh, tonight, Monday night. So, um, yeah, they kind of got to find their groove here a little bit. And that's what happens in the beginning of the season. You kind of weed out uh, the bad things and try and find your mojo and then and roll with that. But Knicks are, you know, staying afloat, staying competitive. And, you know, we'll see where this team is in a couple of weeks. You know, I don't think the Knicks are going to be a top four C in the East. And that's yeah. not to say they're going to be 
better or no, it's not. And that's not to say they're going to be better or worse than last year. I think they're a better team than last season. I think they'll have a better record than last season. And I think overall, again, we'll look at them as a better team, but the East is just better. It, the East is loaded. The, the is. East for the first time in like 10 freaking years is better than the West. Yeah. In my opinion, I think they, are. no, I, I agree with you. I think it is. I mean, you got Sixers, Heat, Nets, uh, I don't want to say the Wizards yet. Um, Bulls, I I think the Bulls are legit. The Knicks, Cavs, you know, pretty young, decent players on that team. And then Raptors you got banged up. The Raptors, the Bucks, the Celtics, the Hawks. Like those, the Bucks, Celtics, and Hawks. Those are three teams that were top three, top four, five seeds in the NBA last year. The Hawks. They'll make the seasons. playoffs. Um, the Pacers have been good in recent history, so the, the East is pretty low. There's only about three teams that I would write off and say, oh, no, they're they're not good. Um, the Heat the heat are very good the this heat season. Are very, very and good. I, and I'll say this. If, if the Nets don't get Kyrie back or figure something out to get something for Kyrie Irving, they the Heat, in my opinion, are the team in the, in the Eastern what Conference. What would you trade for Kyrie Irving? If you're a team, like, why would you trade for that guy? Well – I would trade. Why? I mean, he's. I mean, yes, he's a head case, but he's a very productive player. But he's been a distraction everywhere he goes, and he's still not vaccinated. He's not vaccinated, but that's not an issue if he goes anywhere else. Well, what about when he wants to play on the road? Are those teams going to allow it? Teams that play at home. This is the problem with the NBA. They're not consistent. Kyrie Irving can play for the Detroit Pistons. And come to Madison Square Garden and play. That makes absolutely no sense. I know. This is why Adam. Really that is why Adam Silver is an L commissioner. Adam Silver is a terrible commissioner. We also have terrible leaders in the state, but you know we won't. We won't go there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, but yeah, it's it. There, and yeah, listen. And as much as we want to crap on Kyrie for being, you know, a bozo, I'll, he. This is wrong with how inconsistent they are. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's I mean, crazy. You, you can't be half pregnant. Like, yeah. One side or the other. That's it. You you love that term. You love that term. I do. And, you know, I got it from, uh, I think, Don LaGreca or somebody on the Michael K show because they use that term all the time. And and I love it. It's, it's a good term. Yeah, it, it, it is. Can't be half pregnant. You like the chain out, none of the zipper, not up at all. Yeah, yeah. You look like that guy from that, uh, that TikTok who says uh, – Hey, where's the freaking Gabagoo? That that guy? You look like Tony. Oh, yeah. little Mo Mozzarella? Yeah, no, the other guy, the guy who was imitating Tony Soprano. Oh, I don't know that guy. I'll send you the me. video when we stop. Yeah, please. Hey, yeah, I would get a real mob boss. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a compliment. And you know, they're cut, you know. Yeah, we're, nice we're I would tr- I would trade, you know, a normal amount for Kyrie. He's very he's a very productive player still. I mean, he was a great normal, offensively last year. What do you mean a year. normal amount? Like, multiple like whatever first, like whatever his value is in a normal year to trade for him, I would trade for him. So, would you give up like multiple firsts and a young player for Kyrie? Well, I don't think the Nets would want that, but yes, I would. Why not? You think they'll just gonna like send him away? I think they, in their right for this, they would rather take a two for one than you know a young player. Is this his contract year? Uh, they yeah, because they didn't extend him. This is his fourth year now. With the Nets, no. Has it really been that long? Is this his third or four, his fourth year? This is his third year. It is okay. Yeah, this first is his year without third KD. Year KD came back last year, right? Okay, yeah. But the Nets wouldn't want picks. Yeah, the Nets would just want. Why the paid. hell? Why the hell would they want picks? They don't need picks. They're not drafting. Yeah, true. I don't think the Nets are going to win. Like, I don't know. I just, I just don't think they're going to win a championship with this in this era. Honestly, that's my. It opinion. sucks because Durant is so good. He is. I, I mean, I, I think we said it last. I think he's the best player in the NBA. He is fantastic. He's freaking. He, he is amazing. It, it sucks he's not going to win it here in New York. I wanted to go to the parade. It would have been cool. Because you know. <laughs> We're not getting anyone with you know. We're not getting one with any of our other teams in this town. So. Oh no, definitely not. Um, no Yankees next year, no problem. Um, maybe, no, maybe the Mets. Yeah, no problem. 
Kevin Durant, I mean, the guy, 28 points, 57% from the field. Like, that's – that really is insane. He, he really is one of the greatest scorers ever. And that's not like, whoa, yeah. oh, my God, dude, what are you, are you crazy? Like, no, he literally is one of the greatest scorers ever. He's the best scorer of this century, I would say. Him yeah, or so. Steph. Him or Steph. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, LeBron yeah. was – LeBron's, you know, known for more of his all-around play. Kobe was great, RIP. Not as efficient, though. Um, imagine putting Steph and KD on the same team. Could you imagine that? Oh, yeah, that's – yeah, and that, that that'll win you a couple of championships, probably. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, speaking, you know, speaking of guys, like you know, what would you trade for him? Would you trade for that uh, that guy in uh, Philadelphia, Ben Simmons? Mm. I'd say, yo, uh, Doc Rivers. I was I was touring your facility, and uh, I noticed you had a couple ball racks <laughs> that were missing. So. <laughs> I'll give you a couple of those and uh, I'll throw, I'll throw in a Gatorade jug and <laughs> and there you go. That's what I want for Ben Simmons. What a mess. I mean, it's just, it's so bad over this there. This is what happens when you start dating one of the Jenners. This is exactly what happens. Stay away from the Jenners. Stay away from the Kardashians. I know he's not dating her anymore, but anytime you throw your hat in that ring, that's why I'm scared for my boy, Devin Booker. I don't know what's going to happen to him now. Can we talk about Pete Davidson? Like, what is, what, what is his deal? Oh yeah, deal? yeah. How is he dating Kim I Kardashian? Like, why is how is this possible? I don't know. The, I mean, he must really be. You know, there are some people in the in the entertainment industry that women find very attractive, and I just don't understand it. But I think Pete Davidson's I, kind of a hit or miss. Like, you'll ask, uh, who you know, somebody, oh. Is this guy attra- is he attractive? And they'll say no, he's disgusting. But then you ask the next person, they say, oh yeah, he's, he's so he's so attractive. So that dude must be packing something. Somewhere. Okay, I mean, he's, right. yeah, kid show. There kid is show. there is kid show. no way. <laughs> like, there is just Fort show. No Fort way. show. Yeah, what are we yeah. talking about right now? Back to yeah, back Stay to the sport, course, please. Jesus. <laughs> but yeah, Ben Simmons. Um. Not good, <laughs> but it's funny because the 76ers are still a good team. Like Tyrese Maxey, who's now getting more playing time because Simmons isn't there, is really stepping up. Their second year uh, guard, he's been great. So I kind of like the 76ers team still without Simmons. Yeah, I mean, Simmons. He's not really that good. I mean, he plays some good Sox. defense. He can handle the ball. He's obviously he's, he's he's six foot eight and he plays point guard, which is nice and all. But the guy can't score. He can't create his own shot. He can't. He can't, can't put the, he can't put the ball in the bin. No. So, <laughs> yeah, you could you could do whatever you want there with the defense and everything. That's nice and all, but I'm not gonna trade for you and you know give you a big contract and, or whatever you want just for doing that. So or and shooting fifty percent from the free throw line in a playoff series. Yeah, please. Actually it's no, worse lo- than that. Lo- lose your team a playoff series, yeah. please. Yeah. And then have your coach blame it on you in, in the press conference and then mm. try and come back. No, please. No. Good. Um Nets uh, speaking of the Nets before very quickly before we end the show, the Nets did lose tonight, Monday night to the Bulls. So Nice win for the Bulls. Hmm. And um, plays a good basketball. Yeah, they are. And the Warriors, like we were talking about before, they are rolling eight and one in the Western Conference over there. And, and LeBron's uh, still hurt. They're about to be nine and one. They're gonna they're most likely gonna beat the Hawks. So nice. And Clay is not back yet. Clay hasn't oh. played in like 800 days. Okay, Steph Curry. Oh. Steph Curry's got 45 points, six rebounds, 10 assists, and um, 12 for 23 from the field, 13 for 13 from free throw range, and 8 of 16 from three. Wow. Hmm. Well, Speaking of uh, best scorers of this century, did, I, did I, right. I skip anybody, by the way, when I said that? I don't think so. No, I don't think you did. Yeah. Is it crazy? Who are the top five players ever? Let's just quickly. LeBron, Jordan. LeBron, I think Jordan. Shaq. I'd put Wilt in there. Uh, Wilt, it was Magic. a different era, but he was so dominant. Um, yeah, I'd probably put Shaq. I don't know; it's tough. Um, I wouldn't put Kobe. I, th- I'd, I, I think Kareem might be in there. Um, 
Yeah, magic. That's just about is it. it crazy and then maybe think... Larry Bird could, but I I wouldn't I probably wouldn't put it in top five. I don't know. I'd have to off the top of my head, I can't give you an exact list. Speaking of list, we haven't made a list I in a while. Really... We should do a list soon, but yeah, we haven't. Yeah. My point of this is, and I'm asking you because honestly, again, I'd have to look at it too. Is it possible for Steph to get into that top five? Mm, I don't think. I don't, it's. I don't know. It's so hard. So good. He's so good, but I don't know. I don't know if he, he'll. I don't know. He's just, I think he's the second best point guard ever behind Magic, and I think he's pretty damn close. Yeah. To Magic. I uh, I don't think that's a crazy statement. Um, I don't know. It's tough. He's such a good scorer, and he's literally like transcended the game from his yeah. playing style. He's one of the most impactful players in, in NBA history. I mean, um, top three for sure. So I'd play. love to say yes, but I don't know. Like to put him over a guy like Kareem or Wilt, I think he could pass Shaq. I don't think that's crazy. And I don't even know if I'd put no. Shaq in my top five. I'd have to think about that. Um, I think same thing with Kevin Durant. I think Durant and Steph can end up in the top three, in the top yeah. ten. Um, I also think it's very difficult to compare eras, especially in the NBA. And I, I mean, you know, you're comparing Wilt Chamberlain and even you want to talk about like Bill Russell comparing him to a modern day center. It's like a whole different conversation world. So, um, that's a debate for another day, but I mean, let's appreciate the, the, the players that we've been able to see in this this yeah. century and especially these past couple of years, because I think, you know, you're going to look at the top 50, let's say NBA players, and there's going to be more guys from the two thousands than guys from the eighties, the nineties, seventy, you know, anytime before that, I think players and the talent in the NBA just keeps getting better and better. 100% right. We have a uh, quiet day in February. We'll do a top 10 player NBA list. Mm-hmm. You know, but, that's the thing. We haven't done a list in a while, but we we really, the past freaking, the summer is always a crazy sports news cycle. And then now with the fall, with World Series and everything, we really haven't really had to. We've had plenty of content. But, um, you know, as we come on the – pause. Um, I mean, can you not? As Layups. We, Please. As we, as we go <laughs> – as we come up onto the, uh, you know, the winter and a little bit of a slower cycle, then we, you know, listen. when the boring sports are playing and the fun sports yeah. aren't, we yeah. will have things. To do. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, you know, a lot of people care differently, but when it comes to our interests, I'm not afraid to go out there and say baseball and football are king for me. And then everything else, you know, I like basketball. I obviously pay attention to it. It's not like hockey where I'm just like, I glance at scores every two weeks. Um, but even if that it, it don't compare to the MLB and the NFL for me yeah, and NASCAR can. congrats to Kyle Larson on his NASCAR championship. You know, we've big got w. Over that. Yeah. Yeah. Big, big. Right. We've got to a whole segment for Kyle Larson. Yeah, whole, know, good for whole, car. Whole segment. Good for uh, Kyle Larson. That's a big one. And yep. ratings wise, you know, ratings wise would tell you that um, that's number two, one and two, that th- those two are King. Yep. Baseball, ba- baseball is ahead of basketball right now. And yeah, college yeah, basketball. Yeah. College basketball. But, but everybody likes to think, yes, college basketball. I will be going to the St. John's game tomorrow night. Excited for that. Um, Where is it? Carnesecca, right on campus. Oh, right. Um, everybody likes to assume that the NBA is like at its peak right now and the MLB is like going down the toilet, but that's not what's happening. No. And the N- NBA gets lucky because they signed a very – yeah, friendly deal with ESPN to put you know every primetime game on ESPN and, and ABC. Meanwhile, yeah. Major League Baseball had to you know take a lesser deal to be able to put their games on Fox and their big games go on FS1 sometimes. Yeah, so it yeah, the, the, to me, the MLB right now is ahead of the NBA uh, ratings and popularity wise, and that, maybe not popularity wise, but ratings wise. Yes, do you know how many viewers the Super Bowl usually gets? Just what is do you, are you asking me the question? Yeah. Um probably anywhere from 80 to 100 million. 
That's insane. Holy Because crap. Thursday night football right now is averaging about 15 million. So it's that many. Yeah, I'll look it up right now. Yeah. But yeah, uh, the M- MLB World Series just now. And again, you got to take into account that it was it wasn't too big bar. I mean, crazy markets. So that's definitely what weren't wasn't the matchup the MLB was rooting for. Mm-hmm. And it got 11 million each each game. So. Yeah, makes you think. Yep. All right. I was looking up the Super Bowl average viewers and I looked up Super Blue. All right. <laughs> That's all we got for today. Talk to you guys next week. Do a little more MLB. Of course, break down what's going on in the NFL as well in the NBA. Anything you got to say? Nope. Check out social media pages yeah. for uh, some posts. I don't Let's know do if we're shadow pages. banned or what it is, but I've been we've been pumping out TikToks and the views of like, I uh, ain't been working out, but. We're, we're, I'm going to get on the phone right now with TikTok. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll call, we'll call the higher up, say, what yeah. the hell are you doing? That place. All right. We'll talk to you guys later in the week.